Um, nope. Good evening. We now have all senior choir members make, that made their way up to the front, and they will be singing our national anthem. So please remain standing while they do. Seated. Not you guys. Good evening, and welcome to the class of 2019 Conard High School commencement ceremonies. My name is Lindsay Tringali, and I'm an assistant principal here at Conard High School. I'm truly honored to be a part of the Conard community and to see the class of 2019 cross the stage and receive their well-earned diplomas. Please join me again in welcoming our senior choir members as they perform the Conard alma mater. <laughs> Beautiful job. Thank you, choir students and Mr. Yurik. Before we continue with our festivities, I few, have a few housekeeping notes. Please silence your cell phones. This would help us out immensely, as I've been told that they will interfere with our sound system. Also, for those parents who wish to run front and center to photograph their child, while we completely understand your excitement, we would ask that you refrain as we have premier photography taking professional pictures today. This will allow every student an opportunity to have an uninterrupted shining moment and will allow you to sit back and take in the details of this special day. Pictures should be posted by tomorrow after 12 uh, for you to peruse and order if you would like. Their ordering information is on the back of the program. There are many people we must thank because without them this event would not be what it is today. And please hold your applause until I've completed reading this relatively lengthy list. Thank you to the main office, custodial staff, and plant services staff who've worked tirelessly on the logistics, both large and small. Conard's staff, including security, 
faculty, chaperones, proctors, and junior class ushers who have helped to keep us all in order for this special occasion. Mr. Scott Porter and Mr. Samuel Urich, thank you both for our sound and musical selections. Along with this expression of gratitude, we should also thank the Conard High School Choir and Music Groups for preparing for this moment and performing this evening. Mrs. Karen Contorno and Mrs. Nicole Nyland, our senior class advisors, also deserve a special thank you for the work that they've done with this class in terms of fundraising and event planning. Thank you to the central office administrative team represented this evening by Mr. Paul Vicenis, Mr. Rick Ledwith. The West Hartford Public Schools Board of Education is here tonight. Representatives with me on stage are Mr. Dave Paul Uke, Ms. Lorna Thomas Farkerson, and Mr. Rob Levine. I would also like to thank our mayor, Sherry Cantor, as well as other town dignitaries. Thank you for all of your support in our schools that help our students succeed. Thank you to the West Hartford PD for their presence today and to Premier Photo as well as West Hartford Community Interactive for covering this event. Thanks to them, it's currently being live streamed. Thank you to the Parent Volunteers and Safe Grad Planning Committee for all you do for our students and specifically for giving our students a special and safe way to bid farewell to their friends at Conard. Lastly, parents, guardians, grandparents, and other family and friends of the graduating class, thank you for helping our students get to this point. Can we have one big round of applause for all of those mentioned? Thank you so much. To officially welcome you, I would like to introduce the president of the senior class, Floor Berrian, to say a few words. Good evening, family friends, faculty, and fellow graduates to the Conard High School Class of 2019 Commencement Ceremony. Today is the day. Our continuous hard work and eagerness for success is moments away from paying off. Walking across this stage and accepting this diploma marks the moment we take the knowledge and experiences we've gained from Conard and pave the way for ourselves. On behalf of the entire senior class, I would like to thank all who have given us the confidence to reach this point. Thank you to the early rising parents and guardians who drove us to and from school or practices. And thank you to our family and friends who always knew when we needed those words of encouragement to keep pushing through. I feel that we should also reflect and acknowledge our friends, relatives, and our own classmates that couldn't be with us tonight, but are most definitely here in spirit and cheering us on. In addition to the continuous love and support we've received from parents, family, and friends, I feel compelled to mention how lucky we are to have such a dedicated central office administration, members of the Board of Education, our principal, Mr. Duarte, and our amazing vice principals, Mr. Fisk, Mr. Hines, and Ms. Tringali. Because of you all, we are finally gathered here today to celebrate Conard High School's graduating class of 2019. <laughs> I can practically feel the excitement in this gym today, but no doubt is it paired with a longing for more time with the friends and faculty we've grown up with. I feel incredibly fortunate that I've had the opportunity to spend the past four years of my life with such a supportive staff and been able to surround myself with an unbelievably talented and creative group of individuals. We as a class shouldn't dwell on how much time is left, rather the relationships we've created our time here. Despite the bittersweet, bittersweet feeling, we know that whatever our new path may be, we are prepared for the new people, experiences, and ideas that we encounter. So on behalf of the entire class of 2019, I would like to welcome you all and thank you for supporting us throughout our journey to get to this memorable day. Thank you.
Thank you, Floor. Our next speaker is our principal, Mr. Julio Duarte. Good evening and welcome, parents, grandparents, family, friends, and distinguished guests to Conard High School's 62nd commencement ceremony. I would like to thank you for joining us this evening and for providing the support and guidance that has helped foster the success of all of our students over the years. I would also like to give a special thank you to my wife, Jill, my two sons, Tyler and Justin, who are home watching the live broadcast on TV for your love, support, and especially your patience throughout the school year. Today, you, the Conard Class of 2019, will receive your high school diploma. I hope that you know that your diploma is much more than just a piece of paper. It is a symbol and a testament to the hard work, dedication, and perseverance that has required you to attain this goal. I strongly encourage you that at some point over the next few days to take a few minutes to thank the various people in your life who have helped support you along the journey. When I first spoke to you during your freshman year, I challenged you to continue the amazing reputation that Conard has built and maintained over the years. As I stand here four years later, I can without a doubt say that you not only met this challenge, but you set a new bar for future classes. I'm extremely proud of all that you have accomplished during your time here, and it has truly been my honor to be your principal. You have made these four wonderful years filled with so many great memories, such as sitting in the audience watching the numerous remarkable performances, such as Singing in the Rain or Unified Theater, admiring the phenomenal student artwork displayed throughout the school and at this year's art show, cheering you on with the Red Sea at various athletic competitions. But honestly, what I have enjoyed most are the numerous informal conversations that we have had in the classroom, in the hallway, and in the cafeteria. You are truly an amazing class, and I will sincerely miss you. Now, this past summer, I read a great book called Chop Wood, Carry Water by Joshua Metcalf. And I wanted to take a few minutes and share with you one of the stories that was in this book and that I actually shared with our faculty on the day before school started. The story is about an amazing architect from Japan named Koda, who built some of the finest houses in all of Tokyo and became world famous for these amazing homes that he built. However, after 30 years, Koda grew tired of building houses for other people and he was ready to retire. Instead of building homes, he wanted to travel the world and spend lots of time enjoying his grandkids. So Koda approached his boss and turned in his two-week notice. When seeing this, his boss told him how grateful the company was that he had worked for them for so long. However, they had one more favor to ask him. He said, could you please build one more house? It is a very important house for an important client, and everyone in the company agreed it needs your magic touch. After hearing this request, Koda was very frustrated because he would need to cancel two trips that he had already planned and essentially postpone his new life, all for one house. Reluctantly, he told his boss that he would do it, but was very clear that this would be the last house he ever built. But while Koda had agreed with his, heart, with his head to build this house, his heart was no longer in it. He had always been very hands-on through the entire building process, always selecting the finest material by hand and making sure that every detail was diligently tended to. But this house was different. He viewed it more as an obligation than an opportunity. He delegated much of the work, and consequently, a lot of things started slipping through the cracks. It was obvious that it lacked the wow factor that Coda's other homes were well known for. Although Coda knew in his heart that this was far from his best work, he was just happy to be done and ready to move on to the next phase of his life. So after four months, Coda finally finished the house. He went back to his boss and told him, I did what you asked. Now I am asking one last time for your blessing to retire. His boss said, thank you, Coda. We just have one more thing. Hearing this immediately angered Coda, 
because he thought that his boss was going to ask him to build yet another home. Instead, his boss reached in his desk and pulled out a very small black box with a red ribbon tied around it. He handed the box to Coda and said, we are so grateful for all that you have done for us. This gift is a token of our appreciation and how much you have meant to this company. Coda pulled the ribbon, opening the box to discover a set of shiny new keys. His boss smiled. The house is yours. You deserve it. Immediately, Coda's heart sank, unbeknownst to him the whole time he had been building his own house. If he had only known that the house that he was working on was for him, he would have cared much more. He would have only used the finest materials, and he would have overseen every detail and given it his all like he had done for the other homes. But now it was too late. I share this story with you because over the course of your life, you will certainly have things to do that oftentimes may feel like an obligation. And when this occurs, you will just see it as one more item on your lengthy to-do list. And in turn, you will not be excited about it and you will miss the real reason why you're even doing it. However, if you can change your mindset and begin to see things as an opportunity, I promise that you will do more and be energized and see the real purpose in your work. Now, over the past four years, I have seen firsthand the incredible power that you have when you decide to seize the opportunity and help someone in need. I have felt the passion that you have conveyed when you have decided to stand up for what you believe is right, regardless of what others may be telling you. I have marveled at your ability to lead others with care, compassion, and conviction. Lastly, I admire your commitment to yourselves and each other as you champion just causes and work to be ambassadors of a global citizenship. My last charge to you, though, is to remember that you you alone have the opportunity to make a real difference in the world and to make it a better place. Conard, class of 2019, thank you for an incredible four years. I wish you good health and good luck with all of your future endeavors. And remember to always build wisely. Go Chieftains. Thank you, Mr. Duarte. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my honor to introduce to you West Hartford's Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum, Instruction, and Assessment, Mr. Paul Vicinas. Thank you, Ms. Tringali. Before I get started, I want to take an opportunity, and I want to ask our graduates, I'm, I'm here to speak to you this evening, if you could just scan the crowd, find that familiar face of your family, that have helped you to get here today, and if the graduates would offer them a round of applause for all of their support. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Board of Education representatives, Principal Duarte, Conard faculty, families, and of course, the graduating class of 2019. On behalf of the Office of the Superintendent, I bring you greetings and congratulations. I am Paul Vicinas, the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, and a former teacher and administrator here at Conard High School, and as I will explain, a member of the Conard 2009 graduating class. And I'm here because of you, the graduates of the class of 2019, because you've made a difference in this school, in this community, and for each other. I'm here to honor you. And as any of us speaking here today, I hope to inspire you and continue on your path towards success, happiness, and making a difference in our world. But now that all the tests and the exams are over, that the projects and the papers have been graded, and that as the homework itself fades away, how have we really prepared you, and what lessons will you take away? Allow me to share a story. It'll be fast. 
It's June 2009, and as I stand on this very stage at Connard's graduation, as the assistant principal, I worked closely with the students and their families, and it's a special moment as I shake hands, receive hugs, and share tears of joy, pride, and excitement for the accomplishments of the graduates and the promise of the future. But inside me, somewhere, hidden away from the moment, I'm anxious, nervous, even a little fearful. You see, I too am graduating, in a sense, crossing a stage to leave behind family, friends, my entire community, and to enter a new world that's completely foreign to me and entirely unknown. I know not what the future will bring, nor how events in the near future will shape the very course of my life. I know only that I go forward with a collection of others, a handful of friends, but most either acquaintances or a host of whom I have yet to meet, but all of whom I will share experiences, develop bonds, and learn to trust with my very life. In a few short months, I step foot onto a foreign soil, not a campus, but a combat outpost in Lagman province, Afghanistan. Flash forward to today, June 2019, and I stand on this very same stage at Connard's graduation, one decade removed. As assistant superintendent, I no longer share that close bond with students and families. The teachers and staff I have known and worked closely with throughout the early stages of my career are each in their own path, many still teaching and inspiring students. Others moved away, and at least two are graduating with you this afternoon. As I retake the stage, the familiar surroundings, the energy of the collective audience, the pride of the families, excitement of the graduates, even the hidden anxiety and fearfulness bring forward the me of 10 years ago to the front of my mind. But it's the me of 10 years later that stands before you today, carrying the wisdom and the weight of experiences that have made a difference in my life. You see, in that short span of time, I've attended schooling and graduated, equipped with new tools and a depth of knowledge within my program of study that has made me competitive in positions of greater responsibility. I've advanced and changed jobs in my career path. I've held five different positions within my two career fields over the past 10-year period, but I was fortunate to earn promotions within the same organizations. Our family has been blessed with the birth of a child, my daughter's first and my first grandchild. And I've also experienced loss, loss of friends gone too soon in this life, and the loss of loved ones whose passing is not only tearful, but sobering in that it marks a turning point and underscores the passage into some next phase of adulthood as I become the elder in the family dynamic. The me of 10 years later stands before you today as you ready yourself to take the first step along a long path of tomorrows to remind you of the most important lessons that we've tried to teach, designed to arm you with the tools needed not only to survive, but to succeed and thrive. These lessons don't carry course titles like biology or health or American government. And while there is no such thing as advanced placement, these lessons do carry honors credit. They are universal, but I'm going to borrow from a framework from my military experience and the Army values. We begin with a review of lesson in loyalty. Throughout your time in West Hartford Public Schools, we've taught you to be loyal to your classmates and to your community. I'm not talking about the way you're loyal to your school or your team by wearing the sports gear, the team shirts, or jackets. I'm speaking of the way that you're loyal to a friend or a loved one, by being there for them in a time of need, showing them kindness, rallying around them when they're down, and celebrating them on an everyday basis. I know that your teachers, your counselors, paraeducators, administrators, and support staff of every walk of life have modeled this behavior, and I have it on good authority from Mrs. Falvey, who works in my office, that this graduating class, more so than many others that have come before it, have learned this lesson well, and that your kindness, acceptance of each other, and the support that you demonstrate for others is a symbol of your loyalty and your humanity. 
The next lesson is duty. Homework, practices, rehearsal, study groups, all taught lessons beyond the content. They taught effort. They taught perseverance. It's said that a job worth doing is worth doing well, or as Mr. Duarte just shared, opportunity over obligation. Those who adhere to this lesson are guaranteed success in life. Next comes respect. We've taught you to stand for the flag because the flag represents each one of us and all of us. Stand up for each other. Stand up for what is right. The hidden lesson is too easily forgotten. Stand with me and alongside me and I will fight for you and for us on the side of our shared beliefs and values. Selfless service. Selfless service is going the extra mile, putting others ahead of yourself. Your teachers have demonstrated selfless service for years, often putting not only themselves but their family second so that you could be first. Pay that forward. Work in your community, volunteer for a cause, give blood, practice random acts of kindness, and remember that the most valuable gift you can ever give is your time. Honor. Honor means living up to core values and a shared set of expectation, and we've tried to teach you honor by teaching you perspective. To look beyond your own experience and view the world through the lenses of others. Carry this lesson forward and everywhere you go in all aspects of your life. Integrity. Integrity is a lesson we try to instill, and I don't mean rules about copying someone else's homework or footnoting for a research paper. I'm speaking of making a promise and keeping your word, standing by your commitments, saying what you mean and meaning what you say. Integrity is synonymous with strength. It's a value to be safeguarded because once lost, it's difficult to regain. And finally, personal courage. Since kindergarten, your teachers have stood up in front of you every day and shared all of their strengths, all of their weaknesses, their passions and their vulnerabilities with you. Stand up in front of the people you care for and the issues that you're passionate about. Take a stand on important issues and put yourself out there for others. You've heard the phrase, life is not a spectator sport. Engagement requires dedication, passion, and personal courage. So take a lesson from your teachers and demonstrate personal courage in all of your passions. These are our lessons to you. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They have carried me confidently and made the difference for the me of 10 years past until today. 10 years past as you sat in your second grade classroom at circle time practicing your addition and subtraction, perhaps picking up your first chapter book. Did you imagine this moment, walking across the stage, lessons complete, walking bravely into a future version of yourself? Ten years from today, as you reflect, ask yourself, did these lessons carry you forward? Do they still hold true? Have we made a difference? And how will you? Congratulations, class of 2019. Godspeed. Go Chieftains. Thank you, Mr. Vicenas. Mr. David Paliuk, a member of our West Hartford Board of Education, but more importantly in this moment, a parent of one of our graduating seniors, We'll now say a few words to our graduating class. Thank you, Lindsay, I appreciate that. To the class of 2019, my name is Dave Poliuk, and I'm joined today by my fellow Board of Education members, Lorna thomas Farkason and Rob Levine. Could you give a wave, guys? Awesome. Um, it's our pleasure to be here today. Thank you for having us. On behalf of the everyone on the Board of Education, congratulations on earning your diploma. As you well know, you've worked hard to get here. 
You've gone through years of education to get to this ceremony. It's something you've been looking forward to for a long time. So take a moment, soak it all in. Remember all you've done to get here, what you did back in your elementary school days, the things you did in middle school, and more recently, your days here at Conard. Remember what it feels like as you cross the stage and receive your diploma. Remember that you've graduated from one of the top high schools in the state. It didn't get that way without your hard work. So congratulations to you all. As you cross the stage, I want you to keep that feeling with you. Store it in your heart. Put it in a box, keep it there. And whenever things get tough, remember this day. Remember that you graduated from Conard High School. You did that. Boy, there's not a whole lot of limits to what you can not do. Know that you can go on to great things, and you're going to make all of us very proud. So on behalf of, again, on again, on behalf of the Board of Education and the Town of West Hartford, congratulations on a job well done. Thank you, Mr. Paliuk. If all senior choir members could come forward again, please. As the choir is assembling, they are going to be performing The Time of Your Life by Green Day under the direction of Mr. Samuel Urich.
That was an amazing job. If we can give them one more round of applause. Thank you. Our next speaker is an individual who was chosen by the senior class. The class also dedicated their yearbook to him. These are wonderful honors, and I know he sees them as such. Mr. DiPolino's passion for teaching and for students is visible in everything he does. His students describe him as a teacher who really cares about them as people beyond the classroom. It was such a moving experience to see at senior prom all of the seniors who have been in Mr. DiPolino's class on the dance floor surrounding him for a picture. What a moment. Mr. DiPolino is retiring this year, and he will be greatly missed by his colleagues and his students. But it is now my pleasure to introduce him to you. Mr. DiPolino. Thank you. I'd like to start by welcoming Paul Vicenis back to Connor. He was one of the first teachers to welcome me, welcome me to this community 22 years ago. You were an inspiration and a mentor to me, and I appreciate it. I would also like to welcome all the administrators, faculty, and staff. You are, you are what makes Conard one of the greatest high schools in the state of Connecticut. Also, a warm welcome to all the parents, families, and friends here to celebrate this special day. And to you, one of the best classes I've ever seen the class of 2019, for your great accomplishment. For your great accomplishment of graduating from Conard High School. I could not have chosen a better class to say goodbye with and to graduate with. I am humbled and honored that you have chosen me to be your graduation speaker, but I think the ultimate honor you gave me was dedicating your yearbook to me. You have no idea how that made me feel. I love you all for that. I just realized I can't see. <laughs> so before I begin my 20 minute speech, <laughs> I wanna give a shout out to my LGBT family and friends. I hope you enjoy Pride Month this month. I would be remiss if I didn't thank Chris Islob for sitting down with me and helping me with this outline of my thoughts. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> the question I ask myself is how did I end up here? Speaking in front of my peers, this group of wonderful young adults and their families, as Jerry Garcia used to say, what a long, strange trip it's been. <laughs> From the rebellious adolescent who sought, who sought two of his heroes killed in the same year, Martin Luther King and Robert F. Kennedy, to the social activist who was almost arrested at the age of 15 for picketing in front of the stop and shop 
for Cesar Chavez trying to unionize the Mexican workers who were picking lettuce and grapes and getting paid very little money for it. Then to a husband, father, math teacher, and union president. I have always felt the need to advocate for those without a voice or for those who don't know how to use their voices. Since becoming a teacher, I have always tried to inspire my students and help teach them that they can have fun and achieve. But above all else, to believe in yourselves. I guess it's at this point in the speech that most people are waiting for me to talk to you about your dreams and goals or finding your passion and pursuing it. This is not about finding your freaking passion. <laughs> I don't want you to find what you love because you already know it or you will find it naturally. I want you to find what you hate and, and make it better. Find your outrage. Find your outrage. What is it that makes you angry? And then do something to change it. My generation is, is too old to fight anymore. We need to pass the torch on to you. I used to think that my growing up was different than yours. But what I have come to realize is that they are not. Political disunity, war, gun violence, economic inequality, gender strife, and racial indifference, all prevalent when I was growing up as well as they are now. Frederick Douglass once said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. We have to struggle in order to create and do what we have to do. And some progress did occur, but clearly not enough, especially when it comes to racial injustice. I was too young to march with Martin Luther King, but I did see the changes that took place from the peace marches to the tanks that ended up on the New Haven Green, to the Black Panthers that came and spoke at the New Haven Green. Some progress, but not enough. It is your turn to march, to stop all the BS going on. Time to bring Martin Luther King's words back. It was Martin Luther King who said, we may have all come on different ships, but we're all in the same boat. We're all in the same boat now. What I don't understand and what I will never understand is why can't we see that if you cut someone, we all bleed the same red blood. We are all human beings sailing the same boat. So what is your outrage? Where do you draw that line in the sand? Then ask yourself, how can I fix it? When are you going to say enough is enough? Okay, so now here's where I transition. <laughs> and I begin to talk to you about technology. Something we didn't have when I was growing up. And I'm sure everyone here thinks I'm going to tell you that phones are bad, that you should put them down, that they are turning you inward. What I'm gonna tell you is that it's false and it's wrong. 
What I am going to tell you is that the phone is defined by how you use it. It is a gateway to the world. When used correctly, your phones can bring you all together faster than we were ever able to do in the past. This was shown after the tragedy in Florida when students around the country were united and walked out of school in protest of gun violence. The problem with technology is that we think posting our reactions equates to activism. It does not. Change comes when you have a concerted effort. You get many involved and you are in it for the long run. How much of an investment do you have when you act anonymously or just post your outrage to something and then just start playing a game? You all need to be in it for the long run. It didn't take just picketing in front of the stop and shop once to get those workers unionized. It took years and many protests all over the country to make the change. I even threw out the lettuce that my mother bought because it wasn't union lettuce. <laughs> and you may laugh at that, but it changed my mother. It made her realize that I had a passion for something and that it was something that she needed to do and we never had non-union lettuce or grapes in our house again. <laughs> now it is up to you to find what works, to bring about the changes you are outraged about. Please be careful of the extremists. And that's on both sides of the aisle. Robert Kennedy said, what is objectionable, what is dangerous about extremists is not that they are extreme, but they are intolerant. Please don't be intolerant. Be outraged. Do something to fix what you are outraged about, but don't lose your compassion for one another. It is not enough to go to school and get an education. You need to be outraged about how people are treated, how, I'm sorry, how people treat each other. I see great things coming from your graduation in the graduating class in the future. Being the new protesters, the new picketers, that makes positive changes that the world needs. Know that I love you, and you will always hold a special place in my heart. I will always be... There it is. <laughs> I will always be there for you. Congratulations, and thank you again for the opportunity to speak today. done yet. Wait. Let me, I, I have one more line, please. Good luck in all you do. Now go out and make a difference. Thank you so much, Mr. DiPolino. I do hope we take his message with us, all of us, parents, students, future graduates, just take
take that message and, and do something. Um, that was my funny line last year, just as a record, just for the record. Um, our next part of the program has our student speakers. Um, we have two of them. Miles Brown will be our first class commencement speaker. Miles, come on up. Wow, tough act to follow there. <laughs> Good afternoon to the teachers, administrators, staff, family and friends of the graduates, and ladies and gentlemen of the Conard High School class of 2019. I am truly honored to stand here before you today. To my fellow graduates, I would first like to say that we should all be very proud of where we are sitting. We made it through every school day, every test, every paper, every lab, every red zone video announcement. <laughs> and for that, we should be very proud. Back when we were lowly freshmen, Many of us set goals for ourselves in our time here at Conard. Some of these goals were short term. Make it through first semester. Try to keep good grades. Meet new friends. Learn to navigate four corners. Find our lockers. Some of these goals were longer term. Make it to graduation. Get into college. Plan for the future and find what makes us happy. For many of us, however, these aspirations that we began high school with evolved over time. I can say with confidence that few of us, when we walk across this stage today, will be the exact person we set out to become back in ninth grade. And that's okay. Life is unpredictable. Sometimes, where we end up is not exactly where we thought we were headed. We develop new interests, take a different path, or just straight up fail. None of this really matters though. As long as we hold on to our dreams, we have something to point us in the right direction. I received a letter in the mail a few weeks ago. It was from me, and it was dated May 25th, 2012. Ms. Taylor, my fifth grade teacher at Duffy, had us write these letters to our future selves to be delivered at the end of our senior year of high school. Reading mine really showed how much your dreams can change over time. Here are just a few of the goals that 11-year-old me had for 18-year-old me. Number one, live in a jumbo mansion Number four, be a Broadway actor. Number five, get a sweet car. Number 12, meet Jennifer Lawrence. And number 17, make a trillion dollars. So it's uh, safe to say that a few of these goals may have been a bit unrealistic, but dreaming big back then never hurt me even if I have yet to meet any of these goals. Though to be fair, to anyone who saw my 2012 Mazda hatchback parked out in the front lot, maybe I did get that sweet ride after all. <laughs> so, all kidding aside, my point is this. Let's aim high in life, because it won't be the end of the world when we don't achieve every one of our goals. In fact, even if practically every single plan we have right now doesn't work out, we can still find happiness. Look, I'm not saying we should settle. We should go for it, take risks. But even if all else fails, even if we never meet Jennifer Lawrence, life will work out okay. You know, maybe believing that everything will be okay will help us find the courage to take those chances in life. Those chances could end up making our wildest dreams 
come true. Whatever happens, we'll still have a shot at what the last goal was that I had on my fifth grade letter. Down at the bottom of the page, number 20, live a great long life. Good luck, class of 2019. Thank you. Thank you, Miles. Our next senior class speaker is Julia Marcella. First of all, I'd just like to welcome everyone again to Conard High School's 2019 graduation. Wow, I've dreamt of speaking at graduation since freshman year, and I still can't believe today it's a reality. As an anxious freshman, speaking in front of a class of 20 would have petrified me. But I guess I thought by the end of senior year, I'd somehow be ready to speak in front of our entire class. I'm not entirely sure if that's true today, but there's no going back now. Something that's been consistent from my freshman to senior year here at Conard is how much I valued the importance of laughter. I know so many adults that say laughter is the number one thing that gets them through their stressful day. I've also talked to a few who say they don't laugh enough. While many of my peers were stressed in classes, as was I, I always tried to find a way to use humor to make the schoolwork and other everyday stresses more bearable. This may have been annoying to my friends who were actually trying to focus. Anna Santoro, I don't know where you are, but I'm so sorry. <laughs> Even though our years of high school were tough, these were our last few years of childhood. It would be ridiculous not to take a breath and joke around. And while maybe I should have been paying more attention in my classes instead of making jokes, I'll never regret how much I've laughed these past four years. As you look around today, try to make eye contact with as many people as possible. Because while it's sad to think about, there are definitely people you won't see again. It's strange because there are some people in this grade I've never had a conversation with, but simply seeing their face in the hallway is comforting. Despite the different lifestyles we will pursue after high school, there is one thing we will have in common for the rest of our lives. We're Conard High School graduates. Don't pretend you'll forget this place because I can personally list 10 memories right now that will be ingrained in my brain forever. Some embarrassing, well, I'll be honest, most embarrassing, but I wouldn't have it any other way. We matured here. And while some of us are definitely still maturing, this is a place for growth and it will be impossible to forget. I wanted to briefly talk about a letter I received a few weeks ago. Like Miles, it was a letter I had written to myself in fifth grade to be opened senior year. Most of the letter consisted of jokes with friends that I no longer understand. But at the end, I wrote something very meaningful. I wrote, Julia, do me one favor when you're an adult. Remember what I was like. I was taken aback to read this after two pages of lighthearted fifth grade gossip and stories, and I really sat and thought about it. Personally, I know I am still that wild child I was at 10 years old, and I hope as you all grow up, you keep in touch with a fun-loving, innocent part of you. We spend seven hours a day, five days a week in school. That's 1,260 a year and over 5,000 after four years. We've put over 5,000 hours of blood, sweat, and tears into this school. Since kindergarten, 
It's been 17,640 hours, <laughs> all leading up to this day. Sorry, I know that's a lot of numbers, but just consider one more for me. Think back to your 3,780th hour. You're at recess in second grade, trading silly bands and hoping you'll get to be line leader tomorrow. 10 years from now, I'm sure we'll be thinking about how frivolous our teenage lives were, but I hope you look back just as fondly as you do now on your second grade self. Now, when I was writing my graduation speech way back in December, I told myself I would not be cliche and use a quote, but it happened. I had been watching my favorite show and was inspired by a thoughtful statement the main character gave. A man named Michael Scott once said, <laughs> I knew exactly what to do, but in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. Now, this quote is from the stress relief episode of The Office, and Michael was referring to when Stanley had a heart attack during the workday, but I believe it can be applied to our situation as graduating seniors as well. We are entering a new chapter in our lives and have no idea what the future holds. I want to remind you to go easy on yourself and allow yourself to make mistakes. For these mistakes are not failures, they're simply road bumps. At times of hardship and stress, picture that innocent second grader at recess and think about how far you've come. Since those days on the playground, there have definitely been times when you felt lost or scared, and you still got through it. So coming to the end of my speech, I want to remind you not to take yourself too seriously. Laugh every day. Dream like you did when you were 10 years old. Embrace your mistakes, and believe that you are ready to tackle the unknown, because you certainly are. I'm honored to have been able to speak in front of you all today. I wish you the best of luck. Congratulations to the class of 2019. Great job, Julia. We will now begin with the presentation of the diplomas. Yep. The names of the graduates will be read by our school counselors, Kate DeJulius, Adam Linker, Don Hoblet, Karen Mortensen, Kristen Mangini, and Bob Segui. During the presentation, I will ask that you, the audience members, please remain in your seats and refrain from applause until all students have received their diplomas. This will give each student his or her special moment as both the graduates and family of the graduates can then hear all of the names being read. Mrs. DeJulius will begin as our first reader. Kaylee Marie Olette Augusto. Aisha Actor. Mikaela Aleshu. Kayla Nicole Alexandre. Louis Andres Alicia. Marissa Sierra Allen. Alexander Nicholas Almazan. Jason Manuel Alvarado. Jaza Dayong Amchak. Timothy Antonio Andrews. Aaron Jose Aparicio. 
Andres, Andres Sebastian Ariza, Jewel Christine Armstrong, Millard Alton Arnold V, Aaron Noel Aruda, Alexandra Nicole Artiega, Derek Luis Arzola Torres, Finn Thomas Ashworth, Eliza Audain, Augustin Edward Bacon, Isabella Mary Bailey, Samuel Jasper Baker, George Leo Baldwin, Stephen Baccaro, Maya Canassis Barlow, Reed Christian Baronian, Flair, Flor Marie Barion, Hannah Berry, Brendan Lino Battiston, Victoria Elizabeth Beaton, Christy Shotzi Bomier, Matthew John Biazaglu, Liberty Regina Bednars, Walker Edward Benet, Daniel Michael Bernard, Lauren Brittany Betancourt, Sage Ashtak Bhagwansingh, Nandini Bhatt, Sabat Bhatt, Seamus Lee Biggs, Molly Ann Myron Binder, Emily Nicole Birnbaum, Kobe Blue, Brianna Marie Bobo, Colin Michael Boccaccio, Alexander Clayton Boehm, Sophie Victoria Boisvert, Tom Maverick Bondock, Elena Borio, Ryan Budis, Kyle James Bridgman, Paloma Rose Brites, Eleanor. Ian Brown, Miles Ioposi Brown, Eloise Barto Brigari, Sean Josiah Boudou, Tyler Joshua Boudou. Kelly Bui, Kathleen Dalton Bergdorf, Martin Edward Burke, Thomas James Burnett, Khalil Javon Bernie, Nolan Enzo Butler, Alexandra Sabina Buyak, Ashley Liana Caceres, Alexander Maximilian Callahan, 
Grace, Maddie, Kansian. Ariel, Finan, Rodidi, Kaplan. Xavier, Henry, Caraballo. Bryant, Patrick, Karen. Shane, Peter, Carr. Phoebe, Elizabeth, Carter. Noah, Jacob, Case. Inez, Siti, Castillo. Lewis, Angel, Castro. Isabella, Mary, Celio. Jacob, James, Sersasimo. James, Francis, Chevier. James, Harry, Christ. Michaela, Elizabeth, Clark. Raven, Alyssa, Victoria, Clark. Grace, Marie, Coburn. Madeline, Grace, Coco. Madison, Joy, Cohen. Lenworth, Roy, Cole, Jr. Austin, Ross, Comrie. Michael, Cortez. Michael, Austin, Costello. Arthur, Martin, Lewis, Couch. Scheib, Carnero, Chardonnay, Couchman. Hannah, Elizabeth, Crawford. Keisha, Grace, Cronin. Grace, Aaron, Cronin. Brendan, Xavier, Crumby. Marcos Antonio Cruz. Anna Grace Tchaikovsky. Angelina Divine Grace Davis. Bryson Augustus Denby. Carl Jerome Denson. Ruth Dyers, Errol Lewis Dixon, Jr., Michael Christopher Driscoll, Margaret Catherine Drummy, Mason Tyler DuPont, David Dynowski, Leanna Rose Eisler, Grace Danielle Evans, Grace Elizabeth Fianza, James Michael Falvey, Dylan Farrell, Pablo Ant Antonio Figueroa, Kaylin Marie Flaherty, Heather Ann Flannery, Noel Ubaldo Flores, Noelle Flores, Justin Peter Furs, Madeline Ter Teresa Gallinado. Jaden Nicole Garcia. K. 
Katherine Garcia, Christina Nechenok Gaudio, Aluwatoyin Rebecca Badabo, Evelyn Rose Gurdy, Ruselraj Gamire, William Francis Gibbons, Jake Edward Gianfrido, Benjamin Luke Giroux, William Gomez, Alec Gonzalez, Nathaniel Gonzalez, Josuel Gonzalez, Elijah Solomon Gordon, Micah Gordon, Lindley Gorman, Sarah Elizabeth Gotthelf, Megan Elizabeth Goulet, Charlotte Ann Grenz, Isabella Soleil Guajardo Moore, Angel Louis Guevara, Neil Philip Gustafson, Jeremy Echo Jose Hansen. Julia Lee Hardesty. Tamara Chaz Harris Frederick. Gabriella Hope Hart. Medino Abdullai Hassan. Fallon Elizabeth Hemingway. Shay Henderson, Eric Sergey Himmelstein, Mary Halrutz, Zoe Madison Howd, Valid Hussein. David Quinn, Hamza Urshad, Janelle McClay Isaacs, Claire Elise Idelson, Latasia Jihad Jackson. Arjun Jackjeevan, Jessica A. James, <laughs> Colebrook James Johnson. Cassidy Aaron Jones, Morgan Rose Jones, Tanaya Alexis Jones, David James Cavanaugh, Aaron Jefferson Kahn. Sakusal Katawada, Audrey Alice Kim, Ian Tanai Kimberly, Benjamin Owen Kirby, Grace Catherine Nidal. 
Devin Steven Christ. Soren Soman Kulkarni. Drew Austin Lacoste. Liam Lacroix. Andrew Joseph Lagoy. Kadeja Talia Laidley. Matthew William Langevin. Madison Jenna Langweil. Sophia Louise Lankin. Cameron Kane Larkin. Jeffrey Paul LaRosa. Jesse Lau. Emma Youngshui Lauer. Eric Lee. Jimmy Lee. Mivy Nguyen Lee. Quinn Mai Lee. John Carhart Ledwith. Addie Lynn Leitsky. Keyshawn Zuberi Lewinson. Maxwell Joseph Leland. Riley Campbell Liburd. See now here. Okay. Timothy Christopher Licht. Annika Christina Ligon. Ricky Liu. Daniel Alexander Loftus. Kaylin Brianne Lopez. Kelsey Shireen Lopez Rivera. Nicole Lopez. Ray Lopez. Kayla Madison Loro. Kiara Emma Lozada. Ryan Liu. Isabel Grace Lubin. Isaac Madsen Bebo. Patrick James Mayen. Asha Tashinge Malcolm. Rogetta Mala. Dylan Kealoa Malik. Dylan Patrick Mollinson. Lauren Jane Manning. Julia Elizabeth Marcella. Ethan James Marshall. Jeremy Denali Martin. Jonathan James Martin. 
Ezekiel McDonough. Efrain Martinez the third, Daniel Martinez Rodrigo, Lauren Elizabeth Massaro, Ke Sorry. Keegan Buckley May, Abigail Catalina Mayure. Andres Antonio Mayure. Ciara Elizabeth McCann. Lydia Eleanor McCracken. Emily Keen McDill. John Miller McGovern, Nora Marie McGowan, Connor Joseph McEwen, Stephen James McNally, Jack Morgan Mello, Danielle Lauren Miller. Stephen David Mills, Kate Catherine Miranda Corvalin, Chase Alexander Mitchell, Zarina Muhammad, Fernando Mojardine Quintero. Christian Manuel Montanez. Bradley Alexander Morales. Mark Morales. Allison Paige Moorhart. Megan Lily Moorhart. Tarek Ziad Momne. Rodrigo Munoz. Jamie Alexander Nadu. Eli Walter Nanny. Isabella Christina Nachev. Julia Mason Neal. Vincent Lloyd Nemergut. Cindy Nugent. Sheila Nugent. Tram Nugent. Yen Nugent. Keegan Weaver Nuttall. Paige Benedict O'Connell Bach. Derek Robert O'Connor. Jacob Otto. Cassidy Lynn Olechna. 
Noor Osman. Gabriel Otero. September Outlaw. Sophie Isabel Bobis Overstreet. Anthony Pallas. Natalie Nicole Paredes. Cheyenne Nikita Olivia Parker. Lucas Monroe Pauluk. Brady Daniel Paulus. Michael Stephen Pachenik. Jonathan Alexander Perez. Ganesh Donald Pedersen. Tutu Min Pham. Victoria C. T. Pham. Michael McGrath Phillips. Ariana May Pineda. Julia Cote Prescott. Abigail Eleanor Quinn. Michael Kiros, Jr. Redwan Rahman. Alba Maria Ramos. Ayana Regina Ramos. David Thomas Regan. Reiner Deshawn Reichenberger. Jalisa Marie Resto. Joel David Runing Scherer. Elena Suzanne Resendi. Natalie Rivera. Dominique Renee Robinson. Christopher Jaden Rodriguez. Julian Enrique Romero. Brandon Alexander Roy. Colby James Roy. Max Aiden Ryan. Ian Donald Sagers. Anthony Salazar. Nicole Sanchez. Alexi Jose Santana. Daniel Santana Gonzalez. Anna Elizabeth Santoro. Isabella Florence Santos. Nicholas Mason Santos. Alexis Noreen Sargent. Owen Daniel Shugalinski. John Dimitri Scrimger. Richard Lal Sicheran. Michaela Rose Seville. Kate Olivia Schaefer. 
Syed Ahmad Shams. Kenneth Lee Chazelle, Jr. Nora Jane Sherrill. Ayana Sheen Siembab. Gurpreet Singh. Cameron Constance Slocum. Shayer Nyasia Annie Small. Caroline Elizabeth Smith. Ethan Gregory Smith. Katya Ferreira Suarez. Matthew Ryan Sorgio. Elkin Felipe Sosa. Brandon Marino Souza. Christian Clevens St. Just. Danielle Tan Sterling. Alexandra Isabel Stiber. Dylan Roger Stricklett. Katrina Elaine Stump. Elijah Gregory Suarez. Gabriel Manuel Suarez. Peter Joel Sweeney III. Joanna Zito. Matthew Jared Skoda. Noah Andrew Theriault. Mairead Johanna Theory. Christian, excuse me, Timothy Christian Tobin. Emily Wei Ya Tong. Andy Tran. Allison Rose Turner. Kara Ellen Turner. Gabriella Joe Urso. Misa Yuvalik. Alicia Christina Valley. Mario Garrett Vasquez Esposito. Michaela Dini Vasquez Steele. Zar Sharad Vaughn. Yariel Vasquez Lorenzano. Delise Marie Vega. Jalen Alex Vega. Natisha Liz Vega. Yeraldi Villasana. Matthew James Vitelli. Mario Paul Volpe. Desiree Miranda Walker. Bridget Elizabeth Walsh. Genesis Jaslyn Nicole Ward. Jay Morris Weston. 
Nathan Carter White. Cameron Jaquez Wilson. Thomas Manning Wilson. Imani Alexis Womack. Dylan Joseph Woods. Thomas Jesus Woods. Auden Thomas Wolfson. Daquan Latrell World. Jordan Xavier Lamont Wynn. Q Yen Yi. Kevin Yang. Julia Elizabeth Yanasi. Belly Adrian Yigel Kaljab. Eric Glenn Youngstrom. Nathan Morris Usman. Alexis Nicole Zayas. Edward John Zimmerman. At this time, I'm going to ask that the faculty be dismissed and staff to line up in the auxiliary gym um, for our what we call our gauntlet, um, and I'll explain that in a moment. And they're going to set up to congratulate our newest alumni. Okay, so students are, students in a moment will be recessing through the doors in which they came through and walk through the auxiliary gym where the teachers will be waiting. This is going to be the last part of our program and it's the part that we initiated only a few years ago. Graduates, if you remember back to freshman year, Connard faculty and staff lined up in the lobby cheering you on as you entered Connard High School for your first time as our student. Now, as you leave Connard High School for your next phase in life, more mature and knowledgeable, we would like to send you off in the same manner. Mr. Duarte will now take the stage to officially graduate the Connard High School class of 2019. this time, would the graduates please stand. Move your tassel from right to left. Mr. Vicenas, West Hartford Board of Education members and Conard High School faculty and staff, 
having met the requirements set forth by the West Hartford Board of Education, I present to you the graduates of Conard High School, class of 2019. Sit on my radio. 